Welcome to The Good Work, a podcast and video series that follows The Event Company, an event design company that specializes in corporate, nonprofit, and social events. Our passion lies in creating one-of-a-kind events that share the good work of organizations we are fortunate to collaborate with. Tune in for conversations with leaders of these great groups, our best advice for your next event, and some behind-the-scenes moments. Now, let us show you the good work. In today's episode of The Good Work, the team will be sharing their tips and tricks for a successful outdoor event. There is nothing better than a beautiful event on a perfect summer or fall day, but outdoor events also come with their own baggage. The event company will discuss the importance of planning ahead, things to pack, and the extra expenses you might not be aware of when planning an outdoor event. Please welcome to today's podcast, Addie, Callie, and Maddie. Welcome back to today's vodcast. I'm so excited to have you guys both back with us. Good morning. Maddie. Hello. Callie. Good morning. Excited. Yeah, yeah I am excited to talk about outdoor events because we know that they could be a beast of their own. Okay. <laughs> yes. 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 Nice, like, yes. Yep. <laughs> um, but they're also so incredibly gorgeous to be out in the so elements. Pretty. And Sarah on our team, who's not with us today, but She's actually planning her own outdoor event, her own yeah, wedding right now exciting. outdoors. So she kind of helped write a parts of today's kind of talk and script. So she could probably add a little few tips and hints. And maybe she yeah. should watch this on repeat over these next few months. So, she, so maybe yeah. she can <laughs> really <laughs> ingrain a few of our ideas. Gosh, yeah. do you remember when she told us that she was doing it outdoors? Yeah, like, your first instinct was like, what are you uh, thinking? Yeah. <laughs> Think again, Sarah. <laughs> yeah. No, we're excited for it. I think it'll be beautiful. But let's talk about a couple outdoor events that we've planned over the last, gosh, five years now. Some of the challenges, some of the exciting parts. Um, they, like I said, can kind of be their own beast of themselves. Yeah, but definitely. there's so many different beautiful pieces of them. But what comes to your mind? Actually, I'm going to start with you today, Maddie. Yeah. So you started um, actually the week of a three-day really outdoor setup yes. of an event. Talk to us a little bit about your experience with with that outdoor event. It was interesting. It was my first week, so I really didn't know any different, I guess. But it was <laughs> very hot. And Gosh, it was hot. Uh, so thank hot. goodness they had a nice big garage and a very big tent rented yeah. to block some of that sun. But yeah, I don't know. There's so many little things that you don't really think about when you have when you're going to be out in the heat, like what you wear or <laughs> like I'm pretty sure I had picked to wear like a long like a long sleeve dress. And then I woke up that morning. It was supposed to be like 90 degrees. And I was like, oh, I will not be wearing that. That is for sure. <laughs> it was so hot that weekend. Hot. So hot. humid. It was Memorial Day weekend, and it was so incredibly hot, but it was so beautiful because it was. You know, we'd been planning that event for a few months, and this was a family reunion and a birthday party. Yes. Kind yes. of a celebration all in one. And you're absolutely right. Like, we worked with Ideal to kind of design that tent space, and mm-hmm. the tent was kind of an extension of their garage, which is nice. That's one awesome tip to use. If yes. you've got an existing structure in place that you you can just butt a tent right up to it. Do it by all oh, means. For mm-hmm. sure. But do you remember when we were there for setup that day? Like we didn't plan, neither did Ideal actually. Even we did site yeah. walkthroughs that we were going to have to rip up this client's yes, uh, their flower, yeah. oh, and flower that. bed. Yeah. And that, the yes. flower bed. The flower bed. We knew that we were going to not like rip up the concrete. concrete. We knew that part. And they were okay with it because they were replacing it anyway. Yep. And Ideal does such a great job of filling those holes anyway. Yes. And honestly, for those of you that are listening or watching, if you work with a tent company, they really should fill those holes for you. Oh, yeah. Like, if you, yeah, Definitely. I mean, that's one of the yeah. one of the main things for when you're staking into those. But mm-hmm. the bigger the tents, you get the more stakes that you have yeah. to have yes. you know? but she had just planted yeah this such a cute little flower little garden like a little grove oh, of flowers it was so cute and we were like we need to put a pole right in the middle yeah. of that Aww. and it's gonna ruin your whole garden and it was her birthday that day too yeah. do you remember that and so we had like kind of the awkward walk in like hey we gotta yeah. tear up your garden <laughs> but we tried our best i know i got put yeah. the gloves on and you know, try to them, save, I, yeah, each, save them. Got each each little, little one. one. I did. One. I got every one of them and yeah. put them in a little, we set aside some extra dirt that she had and mm-hmm. kept it, um, stored them so that she could replant them later. Yeah. So 
I think just, it was okay. Yeah, it worked out. But those are those the flowers unexpected survived. things you sometimes don't think about. <laughs> what are some other things that people um, don't take into consideration when you're planning an outdoor event? Maybe, Maddie, you can talk about ice. Yeah, that's oh, like, like water. Like when you do an outdoor event, there's so many elements that you don't think of. Yeah. And granted, yes, you're attached to that house. But do you really want 150, 200, 300, 400 people walking into your restrooms? Probably right. not. No. So you need to think about porta potties. Yep. You want to talk about ice and all the water and all those yes, things? Yes, absolutely. So luckily, we had a couple fill in chills, which, if you don't know what that is, it's um, like this big black kind of plastic table. Table. In a sense. Yeah, cooler yeah. tent. And it has a, a couple little cubbies where you can put ice mm-hmm. and then you put your drinks or whatever you're trying to keep mm-hmm. cool inside them. Um, but the ice has to come from somewhere. <laughs> so we had an ice truck kind of thing um, down and around the corner. Yeah. And luckily, the family had a golf cart Woo-woo. that they let me kind of take over for the weekend. And I just, I don't even know how many trips I made. From yeah. the tent down around the yeah. corner behind the garage to this ice truck that we had rented. <laughs> Which maybe I'll describe for people. When you go to like a grocery store or a gas station, you can buy 20 pound or 50 pound bags right. of ice outside. That's what we rent in. Yes. Of exactly. where um, we order, we usually fill like 30. We'll just fill it. Usually yeah. it's 30, 50 exactly. pound bags of ice. Yeah. And so it just makes it easy to not have to go in and out. And refrigerators or ice machines don't make ice that fast. Right. Right. As exactly. fast as you need. So that's one trick I feel like we've especially taken advantage ice of the past are year so for our outdoor events. are so beneficial. A Fairly inexpensive, honestly, when you think about yeah. the convenience of it. Yeah. And it's nice because they can be hidden, which is awesome. But yep. think about it like even if in the hottest of days, which that weekend was so ungodly hot, yes. I thought. And it was the start of summer. And where are you truly going to put all of that ice? Like, no, mm-hmm. you're There's, not. You, even in a deep freeze, it's too yeah. small. Even right. in a large deep yeah. freeze, it's too small right. to hold all those those bags of ice. So yeah, and no one must be running to Walmart all the time. No, no. we un- no. no. So yeah. that is number one. I yeah. think one big thing to keep in mind for outdoor events is get an ice truck. Yes, or an ice trailer. Either yeah, one of them. They've definitely. got them both, which is which is wonderful. Mm-hmm. We actually dubbed. Uh, Maddie, the uh, Elsa that weekend. Ice queen. Ice, ice queen. Because <laughs> she was on duty. Whenever anybody needed ice, yep. whoop, get that I bird. am your girl. <laughs> down and she got it, which was uh, awesome. But bathrooms yes. are another thing. Porta potties. We always suggest having one to every 100 guests. I am a big fan, though, people, of having a male and a female, no mm-hmm. matter how many guests you have. Mm-hmm. Um, and label them as such. One of the things that we like to do at outdoor events, too, is make them our own. Yeah. So sometimes we'll do the push button lights in them, you know, just because when it gets dark out. Mm -hmm. But having nice toilet paper in them, not just the scratchy stuff that they come with. (laughs) Um, But also maybe some air fresheners in there. Um, Just having those little amenities. And then also a hand washing station. Yes. Um, Those are super beneficial to have. But I would always suggest at outdoor events to have one male, one female for every hundred guests. There is ice or um, there is trailers like bathroom trailers, porta trailers, which are so wonderful. We use them for a couple outdoor events actually, where um, there are usually two or three male on one side and two or three female on the other side. It's air conditioned, yeah. pumps everything else out. It has a nice mirror and sink and all those nice amenities, which are wonderful. They're a little spendier. So if you've got the dollars in your budget, that's one thing that I would suggest doing as well. I'm all a big fan of cooling off. Yeah. yeah. And if your guests feel more comfortable, if that's something that will make them feel more comfortable, they'll want to stay longer yeah. and yeah. they'll enjoy the it more. Better. What are some other things that we um, we think about for outdoor events, but most people don't? Uh Trash, probably. Yeah. Make sure uh, whether point. you are at a house or something that you probably do have trash, but you need to make sure if you're going to have a large amount of it that your company will still take it mm-hmm. right. or if you are going to split up. So we always ask the question of when we – if we bring in trash, we'll bring in like um, cardboard containers for trash and stuff that we'll take care of. Do you recycle? Do you not? Because mm-hmm. we want to split that up if possible. Right. Um, where is everything located? So, And if you don't have a trash company that will take all of it, you need to figure that out as yeah. well. So. Definitely. One thing, too, that I always like to make sure that people have the right license license yep. requirements yes. and permits. A lot of people do not know that when you're hosting, even let's talk, talk about public events for um, tents and outdoor events mm-hmm. for public. Sometimes, well, especially in the city of Sioux Falls, every city is different, first of all. We've done events all over the country, and things that are different up in the cities are different than it is here. But um, sometimes you have fire marshals that have to inspect the size of your tent. That's one mm-hmm. big thing people wow. do not think about. Mm-hmm. Um, permits, sound permits are so important. Yeah. 
uh, inflatable permits, golf cart permits when you're hosting stuff on city parks. Mm-hmm. Like people don't think about those things. They're no. just like, I'm going to set up my party and sayonara, <laughs> sayonara. And that's not how it goes. Now, obviously, when you're having it at your home, you're probably not going to need to have those permits. But right. um, one other big permit or licensed request is alcohol. If yeah. you are selling yes. alcohol, um, anytime you're dealing with alcohol and there's people involved, I would always contact the city just to make sure, the city that you're located in or the county. Um, it's so beneficial that you are not breaking laws, especially right. when there's alcohol is served. Yeah. We call um, Jamie Palmer from the city of Sioux Falls. Mm-hmm. Is on speed dial. Gosh, I bet she's going to get a lot of calls now. But <laughs> um, we call her every time that there's any type of alcohol involved. I just want to make sure that we're following the rules. We've yeah. got a, uh, a private event coming up here soon, and it's outdoors. And we want to make sure that we're following yeah. every city rule. Because there's Definitely. rules if you're selling, if you're not, even yeah. if you're just providing. With if you're providing, just make exactly. sure. Like I do not look good in black and white stripes, and I'm. Not going to jail <laughs> over a license. Orange no. is my least favorite yeah. color. <laughs> so it's not happening. Let's talk about the upsides of outdoor events. My favorite thing about outdoor events is that they are super private and exclusive. Yeah. Yeah. You are really building your own venue. Some venues, like Sarah in our case, she couldn't find a venue that really fit her needs or her wants or her family's. Yeah. So they're hosting it on their family farm mm-hmm. and they're hosting it in a tent. They're going to have it so beautiful. But yes. that's one part I love about outdoor events is how private that you can make them. Wouldn't yeah. you agree? Right. And so customizable. Like, yeah. yeah. It's anything you want, you can no rules. Yes, yeah. no really, rules. Well, well, yeah, to an extent, there are. I mean, I mean <laughs> there are no rules, but there are, and it's a, it's truly a blank canvas in yeah. the right. sense of where you can do whatever you want. But, and this is a, a positive too. Usually, if you're not at a venue, you can pick your own catering. But that yeah, can also exactly. be a yeah, thing exactly. you need to think about. That like, oh, I need to find a caterer. Yeah, uh, mm-hmm. someone that will do outdoor events because then you have to worry about power, electricity. Mm-hmm. Those are yeah. things to think about as well. Yeah. Whenever yeah, exactly. you do anything, is how are you yeah. going to get that from somewhere, or yeah. is it close enough? 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 And bus service too. We yeah. talk a lot about that. Yeah, you know, you have these outdoor events, and some caterers will just drop and go, or they'll drop and then leave after dinner service is done, but they don't clear the plates. So you need right. to take that in consideration. Some caterers have that option where you can pay, you know, to have them clear plates and things like that. Busing. Um, even the little things that I think people forget about when you're doing outdoor events is salt and pepper shakers. <laughs> yes. I know that sounds like the funniest thing ever, but people forget that. Like your caterers right. most of the time don't have mm-hmm. them. Some of them like have those little packets and things, yeah. but right. they're doing a nice private exclusive event at home, retirement, wedding, whatever it looks like. Yeah. You probably don't want to have those little packets. packets. Yeah. You know what I mean? With the sporks. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? You have real dinnerware. You might as well just get those real yeah. salt mm-hmm. pepper shakers. But I love customizing those tents because you can do so much in terms of lighting and floral. Mm-hmm. Right. And you can project images up on the ceiling to make it look like a starry yeah. night. And mm-hmm. um, I remember one of our probably most beautiful outdoor events that we have done, a private event, not public, but a private event, um, was last September. And I will tell you, last September was probably one of the rainiest seasons I have ever seen seen in that fall time in years, I'm going to say a decade. Let's just wow. go on wow. that length. It okay. was, I mean, I've done a lot of events over the years and this event was so ungodly wet. We had Davina and the Vagabonds there and it was pouring down rain there. Um, there was, our client was actually digging trenches around the outside of this tent to help provide so much or to help prevent oh, water from, from coming in. in. My goodness. We had to move tables. It was so slippery. It was so wet. But one of the most beautiful parts of that event is this client made that tent her own. It was beautiful. We had floral suspended from the ceiling. We had a separate lounge area, which was so beautiful, white leather furniture, and it was just, we were able to make it what we wanted it yeah. to be. And that's the favorite part about doing those outdoor events is how customizable that you can yeah. be. When I talk about no rules, yeah, I mean, some of the tents have rules like no candles or no open flames and things like that. But being outdoors and in the elements, there's nothing like it, even right. in South Dakota. Yeah. Well, even like customizable, you think of, and this is something to make sure, of, you have to bring in all your rentals. So tables, yeah, exactly. chairs, yeah. linens, everything. But at the same time, you can customize it then to what you right. want of whether if you want a mixture of lawn, like banquet tables and yeah. rounds or different linen colors that you might be able to get at a regular venue and exactly. all of that, that you can truly make your own too. So, so it's, it is a, like a flip of it's a good thing, but yeah. it's an extra thing to think about that you maybe... So when you talk about those things, it is unlike a venue who has all the linens and the tables and all those Mm -hmm. things. How do you plan for that in budgets then? I mean, what does does that look like? Because budgets could 
I mean, they could be elevated yeah. drastically right. if yeah. you're, you're having to bring everything yeah. in. I feel like some people would think like, oh my gosh, I'm going to have it outside, not going to pay a venue fee. Oh, I'm going to have this, not have a fee for this. But you're paying for so many extra things that you, you probably would not everything. think about. Yeah. And I think we know from anything, anytime we have to bring extra things, like that fee just goes up. So mm-hmm. you're not paying it at a rental fee, but you're going to be paying for it in another sense. Sometimes it can be even more expensive. So yeah. Right. So it's weighing, I think, those factors out of what makes sense yeah. and what doesn't. And if you are creating a budget for it, yeah. you do have to remember some of the smaller things or have a miscellaneous yeah. uh, budget for things that you might not have thought about that you will find you end up needing. And we've had outdoor events too where we've actually had to bring in outside power distro yep. boxes yep. as well because they're, the power was too far away. And when you have lighting and DJ and sound and live music and all these different things. You need a lot of power. You need mm-hmm. a lot of power. Plus, what happens when it gets dark, people? You right. need lights, right? Yeah. So some of the groups that we've worked with um, will have the battery-operated uplights, which, are, which can be attached to kind of the framing of the tent itself. But in some cases, we're actually having to bring in additional light. So you need to keep those pieces in mind, too. Um, we've had some events that are outdoors. They're like, oh, don't worry. We're going to end like right before it gets dark. Well, that <laughs> doesn't, I no. like to say like that just doesn't happen. Like people right. just want to chit chat and hang out and kind of go from there. But making sure that your guests are comfortable, I think is also important when you're talking about outdoor events. And when I talk about that, you mentioned it a little bit earlier, but making sure you have like bug spray and sunscreen, sunscreen and extra water. I mean, everything, yes. tide pens. Even like, down to like signage of where oh, things yeah, yeah. are right or I guess that kind of brings me another thing parking another yeah. thing you might not think Parking. about where are all the cars gonna go but like directional signage yeah. so if you are having something outside of a town or even if you are like give people directions from a common way in uh yeah. just to point them the direction right direction or even like around the house venue whatever yeah. yeah we've done so many different things we talk about outdoor signage I think of we've had some groups before where they've made their own signage like mm-hmm. on wood and they paint like bathrooms this way mm-hmm. or here's the party right you know they've painted their own signage which is awesome we've seen it where it's like that staked signage like you see on golf courses yep. mm-hmm. or like the real estate signage we've seen a-frame signs chalkboard signs yes gosh there's so many you That's... could even do something like designate balloons you know yeah I right. mean, yeah. people need to be able to figure out where things are at and yeah I think one other key element that I've learned over the years with outdoor events especially when it gets dark at night people and they're drinking people can't find where the bathroom is Mm -mm. you know because they're just having fun and so having those solar lights there's the little ones that you can poke into the ground Mm -hmm. that has been a huge saver or even luminaries um so uh just those little bags that have the little candles in them yeah just to kind of help do did i say luminaries or luminaries did I say luminary? Uh, luminary. Good. I do like the lumineers. I mean, if I do too. The yeah, I'm they're like, good too. I'd like them to light the path. <laughs> yeah. in the bathroom. Sign me up. But, uh, the luminaries, um, yes. just those little. They can either yeah. be cans or That's bags or whatever. But mm-hmm. people get lost on the way to the bathrooms. Mm-hmm. I remember one outdoor event that we hosted last summer out at Leaf Erickson Park. We actually had to put special flashlights near those bathrooms and on the table. Um, for people because they couldn't find their way and it mm-hmm. wasn't that far away um, but making sure that you have those things too another piece that I always remember and you'll probably be like oh yeah rain gear well yes. weather in general oh yeah let's talk I, about weather in general because yeah you've, actually Maddie you've been a part I mean you talked about the heat but you've been a part of rain and all yes. those things so far this summer you as well without I can just think in my own life I mean like <laughs> as a golfer the weather that I have dealt with for at events too like yeah. I've had to take 250 uh, kids off a golf course because lightning was within yeah. all of a sudden a storm popped up a cell within like two miles so quickly and like so but even so for what your do you guests, do just try to shuttle them in as fast as yeah. you can yeah you just blow an air horn and go but like I've even been a part of a outdoor wedding that lightning was in the area and so we just had to let the guests know and they make their own decisions at right. that point yeah. of if right. you're going to shut it down or not but that's something to think, think about always, rain always shine, have a backup wind plan. Uh, we're in South wind. Dakota so when we always Ooh. talk about if anytime we're outdoors, <laughs> it's uh, not usually a lot of candles and yeah. short center pieces. Always yes. a little topple over. Yep. You learned that this summer, actually, in May yep. when we hosted that family reunion, Maddie, because we had, um, it was such a cool theme. So they did vintage Pepsi mm-hmm. and kind of that antique Pepsi thing. And we ended up having to um, move some of those center pieces around because they were toppling. Right. You remember that? I mean, yes. so, I mean, we just need to kind of keep some of those things in mind and as the- well. The linens were all flipping, flipping over, um, yeah. tipping everything over. So lots yeah. of tape. 
as well. Lots yeah. Of Lots of tape. Yeah. We've learned a lot of those things over the years, but, but I feel like that's outdoor events. It's just, it's yeah. beautiful and there's so many positives, but there are just things I wouldn't even call them cons, just things to think about. Just to keep in mind. Yes. Yeah. So I think we could kind of end there, but Addie, I'm going to keep you on for a sec because, oh, okay. uh, We've kind of been forgetting maybe uh, the past few weeks. <laughs> We've started a new trend of where we're asking a few uh, power round of questions. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been and asking And somehow them, yeah. we've missed you. Uh, so we're going to take care of that today. I thought I was off the hook. We'll get you. We'll get you every time. <laughs> no chance. So we're going to take so care of that So these are the speed right rounds, now. right? Yes. That I, okay, yes. good. I'm ready for you. First one. What's your favorite color? Can I have two? Green and sure. blue. Okay. All-time favorite movie. Uh, can I have three for that oh one? Oh my gosh! <laughs> I love The Wizard of Oz. Like I remember just watching that as a kiddo with my my parents and my sister and brothers, and I watch it with my boys now. I actually have it, I think, on DVD twice, like the collector's one and on tape. So <laughs> okay. I'm a big fan. And oh, you know, let me oh, finish. Sorry. And then Willy Wonka, and Mary original? Poppins. original, original, okay. original, and Mary Poppins. They're also, coming out with good. a new one, a new Mary no Poppins. Way. Yes. No, oh, mm-hmm. I didn't know that. Good. You're gonna love that. Okay. What would be one song on the soundtrack of your life? Shout. Oh, you know, like, I could put your hands up and shout. shout. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> a little bit soft. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's your favorite time of the year? Fall. I agree. Yes. What is your favorite place you've traveled? I'm a big fan of Texas. I huh. love it. That kind of surprises me, actually. Yeah, because I don't like the heat. <laughs> yeah, yes. that's me too. <laughs> I do like it, though. I love Texas. Cool. Yeah. Okay. What's your favorite aisle in the grocery store? Veggies. Veggie aisle. You're such a good person. Yeah, yeah oh, I'm wow. a big fan <laughs> of the veggies. Honestly, I learned this years ago, like the best foods are on the perimeter of the grocery store. Do you know that? Yeah. Oh. Think about it. Like nobody's like, oh, the candy aisle is the best. Well, it is the best aisle, but you know, always on the perimeter of the store is your f- best foods. Huh. Interesting. I never thought of that. To keep yeah. that in mind next time. Okay. <laughs> uh, if you could have one superpower, what would it be? I would like to grant wishes to people. I That's like that a good a one. I'll like, like I will. <laughs> Little uh, dream of genie. <laughs> yeah, just carry yeah, it around with you. Okay. Uh, if you could share a meal with one person, who would it be? Barack Obama. I know that you said that to Cal. <laughs> we could go together. Yeah, we could go together and do it. Okay. Can I go? I had a dream about it the other day. Remember I told you? <laughs> yeah, mean, you did. Right. We like, played an event for him. That's like the, a goal, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm on the Barack team. Shout really. out to Barack if you're listening. <laughs> we want to plan your party. Red carpet. <laughs> If you could eat one food for the rest of your life, what would it be? Tacos. Or pizza. Gosh, oh. I have like multiple answers. I would say tacos. Yeah. Because you can do like taco meat and yeah, eggs. You do like eggs. Well, I guess I couldn't yeah. have eggs, but okay. Yeah, tacos. What's your best piece of advice? Live like there's no tomorrow. Live like there's no tomorrow. Awesome. Love it. Well, thank you. Thank, gosh, for thank you. Yes. switching over yeah. and asking me. I thought I guys forgot about me, to be honest. We could never. never. We could never forget. But... I'm excited for next week. So thanks for joining me. Yeah. And thank you to everyone for listening. Yeah. Thank you for listening to today's episode of The Good Work. We hope that today's discussion will be beneficial for your next outdoor event decision. Tune in next week as we introduce you to our friends at First Bank and Trust and discuss having multiple events throughout the year. Don't forget to subscribe to The Good Work on YouTube and iTunes and follow the event company on social media to stay up to date on the good work we are part of each day.